Taylor, was any of this gonna pop up? Or did Taylor? Hmm? There it is. Was any of this gonna pop up by chance? Uh, just keep using the slides. Okay. No, no get your other pieces. Uh, this right here is a hand drawing. I want to show you that I hand draw all of my stencils, and that is what I am. I am a stencil artist. Um, I let's see. We'll take this. This is uh, you can see my foot in the lower right corner. So it gives you scale. This is a four foot piece. This is typically the size I work with. I like to draw people the size they are. We lost them. Uh, my website is on Facebook and Instagram right now. Instagram has been the kindest thing to me in the world, being just a visual aid. Uh, I left out some cards right there to lead all y'all to that. Um, I'm sorry that this presentation. Did you get to it on this one? You can, absolutely. Uh, Could you keep recording this one? If there was, if everybody, I don't know, I can tell y'all to pull it up. There's a video on the first one I would like y'all to see so that you can actually see what we do. Uh, I create videos for everybody in the process of me spray painting my pieces. We take our pieces, we hand draw them. I then transfer that drawing four or five times, however many layers I think I need, still it becomes a realistic piece. We then cut it by hand. I'd like to show you my finger before you leave here. The lump that that has developed is insane. But we cut it by hand, lay it down, and then in about an hour, eight hour period, I'm able to spray paint it and bring it to fruition. Um, I have no clue what it will look like all the way up to the end because I draw it and cut it. I don't know what colors will be involved until I'm picking that, all those types of things. There, I'm glad you pulled up one of those. You can see me sitting there, keep it in scale. Um, that's basically what I do. Um, the background color is the last thing I ever do or pick and apply it. Now, what I like to do with these is actually represent businesses. This piece right here, I don't know what it says to you and I'm not ever gonna ask you to be honest with you. My whole goal is to create conversation. Without conversation, the art is dead. For me to do that, it has to be in motion to create emotion. So I like to create scenarios where you're telling yourself something about what you see there. And it's only gonna come from the relativity of what you've experienced in life. So I can't make up a story and have you relate to it. All I can do is lead you through the first six frames and the last six frames and show you the middle frame. You get to do the story in your head. Without these visual effects, the art just becomes stagnant, it sits still, and then it collects dust. People are not interested in something that doesn't tell them something when they wake up in the morning, pardon me, in the morning, or when they go ready for a workout. I've had people that commission pieces just so that they can get inspired by Bruce Lee before they're walking out of their house. <laughs> that's nice, I like that. Uh, that helps me keep motivated. This piece that's on the screen right here, this is my donation piece. This, co this cost me simply $50 to make, Spray paint is the most expensive part of it, and I stenciled it for hundreds of people that need help that can't afford it. Usually we take a $50 donation from a family member or somebody who's just willing to do that for a collective, and then we have them raffle it and help them pay as many bills as it will collect. We've, um, in donatable services, done over $15,000 already for people. Uh, Make-A-Wish two years ago had a piece that Cliff Kingsbury they did and signed and commissioned and it paid for the girls' wish single-handedly. Everything after that was just a benefit to the, to the foundation. That is what I want to die in. I want to say I raised a million dollars in donatable services. With y'all's help, I know I can do that. If y'all know somebody who needs something, I want y'all to take a card. Just let me know. I'll make sure they're taken care of. We have been... What's that? You want to do it again? Would you? This video is, uh, it has some volume. It's, when I film these, it's in stop motion, so sometimes I have fun with it. This is one of the ones I did for John over at Super Geeks. He commissioned this. It cost less than $500. Uh, and he got a video for his social media page as well. He didn't even know he'd get it. I do it for everybody. Y'all, spoiler alert, I'm telling y'all because you're here. If you had just hired him and got the piece, you would add a video alongside it. This here is the aid, I'll let you see what we do, and it goes very fast, so please just pay attention and see what I do.
see why that would be her super deeds. They wanted a Clark Kent desk piece, and they wanted to put their logo on his chest. That was very easy for me to do. There's plenty of reference photos out there, so I want to make it sure and know that I do hand draw these. It took me seven days to draw and cut this thing. It took me about 13 hours to film that. And I mean, it equates to a lot, but the final product is all I ever care about, ever. Um, because it's spray paint, it only costs $12 a can for professional paint. So it doesn't add up very fast. I keep it cheap and it gets in, that's why I'm able to sell everything. I have no intention of making $1,000 off of something that only costs me $200 to make. My time is basically all I care about. But when it comes to those donatable services, I will donate my time. All I need is the $50 for the canvas and the paint. I'll do the rest for you. So, um, how much time do we have left? We're gonna enter the Q&A session. There we go, all right. So, any questions? Uh, all right. So, thank you, great presentation. Thank you. Great hearing about everything you're doing. Thank you for your volunteering and donations to the community. Thank you. So, let's have the first question. All right, so you're doing this art and you're donating, uh, you're not donating the picture, you're selling the picture for it to be auctioned off. And do you do this? Is this for every single picture? I, I'm not, I don't quite understand. Uh, what your lifestyle is. Okay, so, so, then, 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 so for each of these, I do. I first draw it with that, that visual aid you saw, the four foot man standing there with no head on him. That's my drawing. Once I get to that point, I can start visualizing how to put him into motion. Like I said, I like to create a, a storyline in between there. So for instance, I would draw a box and a braid coming out of the box, thinking outside of the box, he was disappointed. Something as simple like that, I want to create that motion. So what I'll do is I'll then draw a box to the brain and I will transfer all that graphite from each piece of my transfer paper to about seven different stencils, creating different layers for different paints. Those different paints, once I set them on top of each other on certain orders or trick the order or use paint to deceive your eye, that's when it creates an image full like this. I work straight from black, work all the way to the top to the G. And uh, in order to do that, it took it took me 13 stencils total. Um, the time it took was my designing process. Uh, it takes me nothing to cut something because the line's already there. It just takes me forever to draw it. Uh, I have no way of displaying how I use that time because each piece is different. I can usually say it takes about a week because I like to work within that four foot range. Uh, this is the smallest piece I've ever done, ever. I don't like working this small. It really hurts on detail when people like this, but I can still do it. Uh, a lot of people are like, can you put something on a 20 by 18? I'm like, I absolutely can, but you may sacrifice detail, and it may sacrifice story. Um, does that help answer that? Well, um, I guess you, you're, someone commissions you to do some work. Right. Uh, and do you have two things going on here? Okay, let's say I wanted you, I, I commission you to do the, the geek picture. Yes, sir. And you're gonna, charge me, let's say, because you can use any random number, you're gonna charge me a certain number for that. And then on the other hand, you're also doing these so that they can use, be used for uh, auctions or whatever the raise money. But is that two separate? Those are two separate things, okay. yes. I live off of the commissions. I'm happy to donate my time for people who need it. Um, because I have a consistent selling basis, we're able to raise about $500 to $1,000 off that $50 that is provided. We've had people make more, we've had people make less. There have been a lot of clever ways for people to do that. We've had raffles where they said buy one ticket at $5 or three at 10. That made them about two grand. That paid for a lot of their medical expenses and got her to get the cancer treatment. Um, that's what encouraged me the first time to go that route with the donatable services and seeing the actual benefit. Um, when so you're to... selling these so fast. I mean, if I commission, I, I meant to say, well, I like your artwork. I just want a piece to put in my bedroom so I can get, get going in the morning. Um, do you do you have? Are you doing anything outside that's not commissioned? In other words, you go somewhere and say, I want to purchase that for a certain number. Or you just kind of get in line for your work and 
It was that way. Yeah. I was on the art trail here in town. Have you, have you ever visited the art trail? I was on the art trail for a year and a half, solid. I jumped building to building and then capitalized on the West Table for the longest time. They actually had to ask me to kind of bring some stuff back so they could see what's more local art, which I'm all about. So there is nothing up anymore. It has actually all sold. It's it's gone everywhere, mostly Dallas and Austin. Um, love it. I do better with the business side, selling selling personal stuff more outside. I do personal projects all the time. The second I don't have um, one of these commission pieces like you're asking, I'm making something for myself. This image I actually made for myself. They said, wow, do you have anything to show us? I did a rendering on their wall, took a picture of the thing and just stuck my image on there and it, they loved it. So uh, I had to build it in order to have the image to stick on there. So that's why I took my time to do this. It only took me about two days to do. Another question over here with Kelly. Yes, ma'am. So when somebody commissions a piece, how do you capture what they are wanting and incorporate your style and your talent? Well, I like to do mock-ups. I don't typically spray all the mock-ups. Uh, I do hand sketches and draw. I do a lot with pens, which when you visit Instagram, you will see what my pen work looks like. It's, it's top-notch. I'm not going to even try to play it down. People, uh, I, people in here wear a bear batch. Yes, Baron Batch has been so kind to come forward and take me under his wing. He gives me the best advice, and for him to be 28 years old, his wisdom is beyond me. But the things he shared with me are basically what you asked me. I, it led me, I wasn't thinking like that for the longest time. Now what I do is I try to coordinate as much as I can with the business, but I want them to see my visual side of it as well. So when I do these mock-ups, I do it with a sense of humor, I do it with irony, I do it with twists. I, I try to even show the business leader a different side of what they do. Um, I would encourage you all to talk to Kelly, actually. She may be a testament for me. She just had some people come by that home. Uh, is it a therapy? It's called Stages of Recovery. It's an addiction service. It's an addiction service. And they did purchase the one with the man falling. It spoke, it has, it has a, a speaking to people who have suffered, for people who feel like they're working their way up and have fallen. Um, so it's, it found a good home. Those are the type of imagery I want to capture when, when, when a business comes to me. So if somebody in here, for instance, was a pizza pie place, I wouldn't have to necessarily make you a pizza. I would make you something that had irony behind it or something that made you look at pizza a different way so that when your customers walked in and out of your business, they would chuckle, which means they had that conversation, or they'd scratch their head like, I'm still thinking about it while I'm walking away. I want to make sure that it's not just a dead image for you. I want to make sure it has conversation. So I work very hard just to make sure that the conversation is visible. So if I decided to uh, open an exclusive donut shop here in town and, and I wanted uh, something I wouldn't call it a logo, but a, a piece of artwork that would say something about that company and make it stand out, you know, from Dunkin' Donuts and Krispy Kreme and this okay. and the other. That is a part of your business. That is. That falls under graphic design, which which is fine. I'm not. I don't have a degree in graphic design. I have to let y'all know that. But I can absolutely make imagery for you that can represent your business in a way that other people would, other businesses would be like, darn, they beat us to a punch on something. Yeah. Wow, they just discovered something new. Yes, I would help you with that. I'm not afraid to help you, even you yourself, think of something you've never thought of. I do like when you come prepared with as much jump off points as possible, because with my ADD, that triggers a lot of different thoughts in my head. And I say ADD, not the ADD like a kid trying to get out of class ADD. I mean ADD like I'm losing it and like drifting now. It's, it's, it's hard. So when you say a word to me, it's a trigger word. It gives me hyper focus on that word. Images shoot through my head like this. And so I will spitball with you as long as you possibly want. My time is literally dedicated to just this. This is all I do. So you're dating, uh one of your needs would probably be exposure. Yes, sir. I do have quite a large exposure. Um, for those of you who haven't seen me on social media, it actually has gotten quite out of control. I can't keep up with it much anymore. And I'm not really a tech guy. Um, I spend a lot of time on social media to try to boost that, but I don't really understand it that well yet. Um, I do give shout outs for people like that video we did for John. That gave him quite a large boost in his following as well as his views. Taylor even told me that when they advertised today, 
yard yesterday with uh, the one million cubs, it's the highest views they've had due to some of the fandom I have. So uh, the reason I don't have anything is because by the time I post it, it does sell by the end of the day. Who was the, the piece for? That was for John uh, Benton, I believe is his last name, over at Super Geeks. Wonderful guy, extremely knowledgeable. Super Geeks? Super Geeks, yes sir. And I do, I would love to encourage anybody to go, it's on their wall now. He comments to me every day about the new type of business and the new outlooks that people have when they walk in through their front door. They said, that, that is representative of me. They're like, wow, you've got my sale. Another question over here. How did you transfer from the local scene to a more um, widely accessible scene? That actually was just social media single-handedly. Okay. Um, I never tried to advertise myself at first, like most artists. You do this because you just love it. You'll hear a lot of artists tell you that. But then you ask them 10 years later why they're not doing it, it's because they don't make money at it. Their, their, their passion has shifted from, from their wants to their needs, and their needs have superseded, you know? You, you, if you're not surviving, you're quitting. And, and, and that's just not the case here. Social media has been the biggest win to me. I never thought at the age of 13 that there would be a Facebook or an Instagram to help me as an artist. At that time, people were telling me, no, artists don't get paid. They, it, you know, stay inside the lines. They just rule after rule after rule about what art is, and, and I finally found out that that's not the case. And with media, you can show people that's not the case. I try very much to encourage other local artists to not put out anything, but put out the things that you're willing to take the criticism on. Uh, are you, do you do art by the way? Yes, I do. Yeah, uh, that's, 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 I was assuming, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I was just curious because I was thinking about some similar. Absolutely, and if you need help, Boosting your media, I'm here to help you with that. Cool, thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Well, that's a question. When you're talking about your pieces and you're saying cutting, what exactly are you cutting? I would love, I should have brought a stencil. I am taking a razor and cutting poster board. I will take poster board the size of me. Um, I have on my floor, my cat is destroying it right now a 10 foot piece for a world of beer that is just the continent and i had to hand draw it i taped uh 16 pieces of poster board together at different angles to make sure that it worked and it's laying in the middle of my floor and we'll drag it over there tomorrow and paint it on our wall uh it's simply poster board uh painter's tape i was thinking of the word and, and and the razors and that's as expensive as it gets for me so you draw on the poster board and then you cut that out? I actually draw it once on transfer paper. That way I can transfer the lead that's on there multiple times to multiple surfaces. So I'll make that same size poster board 10 times and then I'll start transferring that same piece of paper multiple times to each one. Because it's on that same piece of paper, it lines up every time. So I'm using the same source, just cutting different poster boards. At the end, I bring them all together to make one solid. So the pieces you're cutting correlate to the different colors you're going to use? Correct. Okay. You, you guessed it, yes. Uh, sometimes you can combine them. Sometimes you do gradients. Spray paint is a very flexible, usable piece when, you're, when you learn to use it for art. But it's very unforgiving when you, when you make a single mistake. There have been multiple times I've had to start pieces all the way over because of a splat. I do not like texture on my pieces. If y'all want texture on your pieces, you have to tell me because I will not put it on there. I'll make it look like it was printed at a store, but this is spray paint on canvas or wood or whatever whatever you come up with, we can do it on. Spray paint's that person. And when you say we, do you have a team? I have my wife. I, I, I forget to say that. Uh, I say we all the time and I, I always get that look. Yes, not me, myself, and I. We, uh, <laughs> it is my wife. Uh, she has, is as talented as I am, but she works full time to help me do this full time. So, love of my life, very talented. She is my we. What are some ideas you have to be able to continue to scale this? Do you start raising prices? Do you start mass producing prints? Do you start? Price will probably always be dictated by my time. The, the, of course, the least I have, the more it's gonna cost, but materials will never change the price of what that is. It literally will be my time. If you want a mural done, I'm only pricing out the time. The, the, the paint and everything, it, it's relatively cheap. I, I think people have been fooled for a very long time by artists as to what it is you really can get for your dollar. I do intend to change that specifically for Lubbock and for Texas. Art can be done 
on a budget and you can still survive. I, 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 I do it very well, actually. Um, I would say, I would say though that if we start doing murals and things like that, it will get a little bit more expensive. And that's to scale. We want to paint love it. And we want to do it classy. We do not want tags or gang members. I've never in my life wrote on a business because it's illegal. I mean, I, I respect the business. I respect the business owner. I see, I see how hard you work and I know that there's a certain determination that you have to have between work and work ethic. They're two different things. Hard work is on the daily. Work ethic is forever. And if you can apply both, which I do to my art, and I know that everybody in here does your business, that it goes far. So there's no doubt in my mind that this department will succeed. It's just who will come along with me really at this point. Another question over here? Yes, sir. Uh, I wondered if you think that a price increase will help you reach your goal for the donations faster. That actually I've considered. I do believe that it would allow me to do a more mass production on my pieces rather than singly doing them per time somebody needs one. If I had them on standby, I probably wouldn't even have to charge 50 bucks if I did them in a large quantity. My stencils last for about, depending on how I treat them, anywhere between 25 and 30 sprays before I have to redraw and cut them again. Uh, but that is 20 or 30 pieces I made out of one dedicated city. So while somebody does oil painting and it takes them a month to achieve something, it took me a month to do something of grandeur and then I can do it 15 more times. So it's worth my time. And that's why this donatable piece is, is so easy to do. Uh, it takes four or five stencils with maybe seven layers and I've done it in about four hours. And now somebody's making a payment on a thing. So, does that help you? Mm -hmm. okay. What are some of the challenges that you had or you plan to overcome that you have right now? Uh, right now, financially, I work job to job, which I don't mind. I've actually gotten so comfortable with it. I've done it for so long, that's nothing new to me. At some point, if I ever did raise my prices, I just don't see it in a, the, the formidable future just because I really want to be in the business. I really want to push it through. Other artists are, they will literally put something smaller than this with a frame on it and think it's worth a thousand dollars. And I'm sorry that's not the case. It may be emotionally valuable to you like that, but you deserve this in your business for less than five dollars it doesn't take me time. I, it doesn't take me more time than I need to do that for you. It, it it resells itself. Other companies have come to me once they see what their company has. They say, "Can you do that again?" I say, "Absolutely. It's a stencil. Let's put three more up in three different businesses you have across the state." It works that well. So I don't know what type of. I I, I hope that I get a business card from everybody. I'd like to know who I talked to you today, but. Um, on social media, please drop in and leave me a message or a comment or something, and I would love to answer questions about certain, because it's more, it's, it's a visual thing. I know you're sitting here trying to imagine what I'm saying. When you see what I've done, that's when you leave the comment on something, because you're like, I get it, or I hate it. I need to know those things. I need to know what the businesses think, if it represents them. So I'm also looking for feedback, lots of feedback. Uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings, not even one bit. Would you ever think about keeping your prices the same but hiring, you know, maybe bringing on a team of other talented artists and taking them under your wing. One hundred percent. Teaching them. And Are you an artist? No. You know, <laughs> I, I just, I was curious. I absolutely would. If I could build a team, if I could have multiple galleries slash workspaces throughout Texas, that that's where I'll that's where I'll probably die. We'll move towards that uh, later on in life. Right now, I'm just a one man team alongside the weed I was referring to earlier. Um, but I would love to have multiple bases where I can have multiple people with multiple creative personalities creating things with my techniques to blow people's mind. I want to teach people how to stencil. If anybody also, I failed to mention that, if anybody is interested in learning how to stencil, I'm going to teach you. We'll do a piece together. So I'm going to make you just go sign your charges. I've traveled extensively, and you know, I just wondered if you'd ever thought about mentoring others because on the side of boxcars and trains, you know, there's some talent. Very, very much so. I mean, you know, you know, if you could find those people and put them, you know, put them in a place where they can start harnessing their abilities. Yeah, I've seen some impressive art on the side of boxcars. I, I have to. I wish I could be on the side of that. Not going to push my legalities there. So. But I agree with you. And yes, I would like to take those people. And, and that I find social media has led me to meet a lot of those people you're talking about. I, I get 
mentored. I get asked questions all the time about what I do. I can actually tell you on here that I'm probably in the top 10% of the world for stenciling itself. I'm one of the best. Um, there are a few other people out there that are, I wouldn't say competitive, they just do themselves so well, and that's all I'm trying to do as well. Just put myself out there. So um, I do have a unique style. You're really not gonna know what it is until you look at my social media. Um, I did bring some unique cards also for some people. So that you can understand what a stencil is. These are my business cards that you have sitting right in front of you, but they're novelty. Go give these to one of your kids or somebody you like. Give them a spray can and don't let them do it on a building. For God's sake, it's my name. Um, <laughs> let them spray it on cardboard or on a sheet of paper and let them be hopelessly addicted to stenciling. I, I want somebody to take these home, whoever thinks that they would like these for their kids. They will not walk away from art after that. Or they'll spit on it, I don't know. But uh, it's, it's, it's addicting and it's fun. And when you learn a new way, a new way to do art, because some people are impaired. You know, spray paint is very fun. So I want to encourage everybody to at least try it. Just don't tag me on somebody's car or, oh my god, <laughs> I can see the cop showing up for that. But novelty, please, novelty. Anything else? All right, so great presentation, great questions. It was a fun conversation. I'll put these up here for you all. Um, and our last question, you already mentioned it earlier, but I want you to be able to rephrase it, let us know what we're taking away and be trying to help you with. Is what can this community do for you? I would like everybody to at least give social media a look. I'm not looking for likes, I'm not looking for follows, don't worry about that. Just give yourself an idea of what we do. If you think we're right for your business, please let us know. We will work our damnedest for you, I'm sorry for that. But we'll get in your place and we'll make sure that you have art that's unmatched. The quality, I mean, anyone can buy. I, I, I'm not disrespecting, you know, landscapes and abstracts, but that's what's here in Lubbock. If you want landscapes and abstracts, you can find them anywhere. If you want visual imagery, one conversation if you want a story I will happily provide that for you. That's what I do. As far as the donatable side, if somebody is struggling, I have been taken advantage of before somebody found out that I did those for 50 bucks, they got a piece for 50 bucks. It never went anywhere it hurt me. But if you have somebody in need, please let me know. I'm gonna work with you. We're gonna make them some money. I think that takes care of it. All right. Great presentation. I uh, just want to <laughs> Just want to wrap up. Uh, like I said earlier, Rochelle will have the laptop in the back so we can get y'all set up.